Welcome to Silo. It's part two of our doubleheader tonight, the Spotlight Game, the Bryan County Patriots Spotlight Game. Well, it comes to you from Silo. It's Caddo. It's Silo. And the first one was a barn burner as the Caddo Lady Bruins come away with a 49-48 victory. Will this one be as close? We'll see. That was a rematch of the Bryan County Tournament Championship game. This, however, is the first time these two teams have seen each other this season on the court. Passes inside, off the glass. Count two points for Kyler Proctor. And Silo's on the board first here. The Cano Bruins are wearing the road gold uniforms tonight here on the road in western Bryan County. And the starting lineup looks like this. That's number 55 over to two, uh, Colton Neptune over to Adair. And starters are this. I said number 55. That is Colton Neptune. He is a senior. Number 10 is KW Adair, a senior. Number 14, Haven Nesbitt, a senior. Number 15, junior Chandler Lackey. And number 24, sophomore Jacob Jenkins. The Caddo Bruins are coached by Colby Johnson. Kicked outside. Number one for Silo wearing the home white uniforms is a freshman, Kyler Proctor. A freshman wearing number four, Connor Cordell. A junior, number 22, Chase Corbin. A senior, number 24, Luke Justice. And a senior, number 25, Brett Forgey. And it is Forgey off the glass. And count two more for Silo. Rebels up by four. Now the Caddo Bruins, number 14 in the state in Class 2A, coming in with a record of 17-2 and two, and a Bryan County Tournament Championship to their credit so far this season. They'll find themselves trailing by four in the early going here on the road. Justice, pump fake, turns around twice and puts it off the glass. Luke Justice has two. Nesbitt slows down, won't take the shot as the Bruins will reset. And Nesbitt up and under, heaves that off the glass. And the Bruins can't get the basket. Justice from long range. Luke Justice with five. And Silo is up by nine. I want to say thanks to all of our sponsors for tonight's Bryan County Patriots spotlight game as KW Adair goes to the basket, can't get the shot to fall. I want to say thanks to Sales and Trails Family History as well as Gallipot Pharmacy, Computer Techs, Modern Abstract, and our sponsor for the first quarter, Heartbeat Realty. Angie Sullivan and Jordan Sullivan and their team at Heartbeat Realty in Durant. Backing up, nice job by the Bruins on defense. Lackey. And it's out to Nesbitt for three. That one's no good. Coach Johnson giving his players an opportunity to settle into this one. And so far, the offense hasn't been there and settled in <laughs> for the Bruins. It's a 9-0 lead. Justice the cutter and a steal by Jenkins. Nesbitt to the basket, Nesbitt off the glass. Haven Nesbitt with two points for Caddo, and the Bruins are on the board, and now a timeout is called. I want to say thanks again to all of our sponsors, and specifically to our first quarter sponsor, to Heartbeat Realty in Durant. Again, I mentioned uh, Angie and Jordan Sullivan. Uh, their staff also, including Leah Henderson, Rhonda Hamill, Brittany Ballard, Natalie Blackburn, and Dodie Gilmore, Recently named the Heart, or excuse me, the Realty Office of the Year by the Texoma Board of Realtors. That was for 2019. That honor bestowed on them just this past month. And congratulations to Heartbeat Realty. Let Angie and her staff take care of you for all your realty needs. I want to say thanks to them for being a sponsor for tonight's broadcasts. Our doubleheader again, first game in the books already. And the Lady Bruins come away with a one-point victory as Kinsey Dixon, the senior, puts in a free throw line. She was fouled at the buzzer in a tie ball game. 
Went to the line to shoot two, made the first one. That was all she needed. 49-48 the final. Forgy gives off to Justice. And the pass is a little bit too high. And Adair comes down, doesn't allow it to just go out and be in half court, excuse me, a half court violation. And a nice job by Adair to come down and sling it back in. Now Proctor is going to pick up the foul for Silo. And Britt Duncan will check in for the Rebels. Under the glass, open for the shot is Hayslip. Gary Hayslip gets two points for Caddo. And it's now a five-point game. And a nice look. Finding the junior under the basket. Justice lost control of it and lost control of his footing. It's a traveling violation, and so the turnover will give it back to the Bruins. Silo with a 9-0 run to start this contest. And Cato with an opportunity to continue to cut into the deficit. Silo checks in at 7-14 on the season. We mentioned Cato at 17-2. Two more games in the regular season for both these teams. Hayslip driving to the basket again. Bruins there for the rebound, can't get the put back. Lackey is there twice and now get the ball again. KW Adair, the Bryan County Tournament MVP, draws the defense in. And now Hayslip with an opening again, trying to find Lackey, can't do it. It's a turnover. And we have a Rebel down on the court, going to get up slowly. And because it doesn't affect the play, it allows the official time to call timeout. Chase Corbin slow getting up. And just some contact there. Looks like he's favoring that left leg. Well, Coach Weil will need to send someone in. He does. Looks like Trey Cook, the junior, checking in now for Silo. Been a fun year around Silo for a lot of reasons. The steal down the court, off the glass. Little bit of English on the shot for Braden Couch. And a nice job there for the senior. He has two points, and it's back to a three-point game. Forgy draws the double team. Nowhere to go. Kicks it out top to Justice. Justice is going to fall away. That one touched a little bit, didn't matter. Didn't have the ump on the shot. Adair looking ahead to Jenkins. Off the glass, KW Adair to Jacob Jenkins, and it is a one-point game. The Bruins have come almost all the way back in this one. And so it's 9-8. We'll keep it right here. Talking about the fun that's been here for Silo. Well, of course, for the Lady Rebels. Coming up one point short in the previous contest, now 20-2 on the season. The number two team in the state, Silo's fast pitch softball team, also state champions. In 2019, 38-3, one of the banners that's on the wall here in Silo Gymnasium. Lots of baseball and softball banners. But that state championship banner for Silo, a long time coming. They've seen the baseball team celebrate season in and season out, fall and spring, and this fall, it was a softball's turn. Triple team, and Jenkins will come away and then lose it right back. So the Bruins looking for another opportunity now. It's an 8-0 run. Adair goes to the court, but this man-to-man -man defense pushing the silo offense way outside. Neptune's back in the game now. 
giving Couch a breather. And the pass is ahead to Nesbitt, off the glass. Counted. And Caddo has taken the lead. Haven Nesbitt with four points tonight. A 10-0 run for the Bruins. Again, the Bruins down a man-to-man look. And Proctor driving around, can't get the good look, and Forgy is there for the board. Kyler Proctor doesn't get a good look at the basket getting around Adair, but Brett Forgy now with two points, or two more points. Long range for Nesbitt. Haven Nesbitt now with seven points on the night. And Cato on top by two. Proctor's going to try to take this coast to coast and does just that. Kyler Proctor with four points, and it's tied up again. First time since zeros. Nice steal. Passes ahead of the pack, and Trey Cook loses his footing there on the right block. Freshman Carter Parker checking into the game now for fellow freshman Proctor with 25 seconds remaining here in the first quarter for Coach Weil. And the Bruins, they were on a 13-4 run, looking to go into the second quarter with the lead. That's not going to do it. Adair called for the offensive foul as Luke Justus holds his ground. Coming back in the ballgame for the Bruins, 25, Brady Couch. Couch checks back in for Adair now, and KW Adair will take a seat for Coach Johnson. And where it looked like Cato might be able to take a lead into the second quarter, Silo gets a look. Lob pass to Forgy, who kicks outside. Long-range jumper too strong for Parker. Still time. Nesbitt takes it off the glass and in. Haven Nesbitt with two more points. He has nine. The first quarter is in the books, but not before the cheerleaders get a scare after that long shot to the other end. We're going to take a timeout as well. Thanks to all of our sponsors, including our first quarter sponsor, Heartbeat Realty. We'll be back in a moment here with the Bryan County Patriots Spotlight Game. This is Midwest Sports Saturday. Good morning. I'm Joey McWilliams. I'm impressed with what you got going on, Joey. Because it's hot. Oh my goodness, it's hot. This is, for my money, the biggest matchup of the day. I'm going to have lots of fun today. It's 15-13. The Bruins on top after spotting Silo 9 <laughs> in the first quarter. I want to say thanks to all of our sponsors for tonight's broadcast, including Heartbeat Realty, as well as Galifot Pharmacy, Computer Techs, Sales and Trails Family History, and Modern Abstract and Title in Durant. Inside to Neptune and Colton Neptune. Can't get the shot to fall. Adair gets a hand out, and it'll be a steal. Neptune will get it back. Nice job there by Lackey to chase that one down. It's going to stay on Caddo's end. Nesbitt with the ball as well as Adair looking Nesbitt inside for Lackey. Uh, Neptune and Couch in the contest for the Bruins. Meanwhile, for Silo, Kyler Proctor checks back in along with Justice, Forgy, Parker, and... Britt Duncan. Parker with an opening, gets around the defender, can't get the shot, little fall away, doesn't work. Each team with just one team foul in the first quarter. Pretty solid job by both squads, each one making a good run as Colton Neptune gets his first basket tonight. Strong to the basket. And the difference between those two offensive looks on the silo end, fall away jumper, 
not going to really draw a foul as often if you're backing away with the shot. Often an official will reward the aggressive move to the inside and drawing the contact. Meanwhile, Colton Neptune going up strong to the basket. Gets a little momentum behind the shot off the glass and in. So Caddo now up by four. Proctor for three. A little too strong. And Neptune there for the board. Neptune looking for a cutter and eventually finds Adair. Spins twice. Under the glass is Lackey. Can't get the shot to fall. And kick the ball. Wow. Off Duncan's face. And Duncan will feel that for a moment. And that would have been probably the play of the night. And Lackey just could not get the basket to fall. Sometimes I believe you can be too open. Second quarter brought to you tonight by Modern Abstract. When you buy or sell property, ask for Modern Abstract and Title. Go ahead, ask for them by name. Modern Abstract and Title. Nice jumper by Braden Couch, who checked back in, and it is now a six-point game. A bit of a dry spell for the Rebels now. As Justice nearly traveled, didn't do it, he'll get it back. And the Bruins employing some full court pressure. We'll sink back into a 2-3 look right now. Justice jumper, good. Luke Justice. The seven tonight to lead the Rebels and ended the scoring drought. Nesbitt took a step or two. And it's not going to be a turnover. It'll be a tie ball. And the possession error actually does turn it over to Silo. Good crowds on hand here for both these teams. Some empty seats on the far side within our camera view, but... It's pretty full over here on the side for our vantage tonight. We're up here in the perch. The high portion of the Silo Gymnasium. Proctor has that blocked by Neptune. Wow. Hayslip now. He's going to go all the way to the basket, but not before he takes down a Rebel on the way. And Justice once again taking that charge. And Hayslip will take a seat after that offensive foul. Credit to Luke Jestis. He stepped in and taken some contact tonight. That's the second offensive foul he's drawn. There's the trap again. Nowhere to go. And the long pass to Proctor. Both these schools found out their district and regional and area assignments. Now both Silo and Caddo are going to host district play. But for the bracket to continue rolling, these teams are headed out west in an area that eventually winds up in Weatherford on the campus of Southwestern Oklahoma State University. Now, the Pioneer Cellular Event Center is a great place to watch a ball game. So, Caddo and Silo fans, if you wind up going out to Weatherford and make that four-hour trip out there, and I've made that trip many, many times, with Southeastern and with Midwest Sports Saturday and some other events to call out there. It's a, it's a solid four-hour trip, maybe a little less, depending upon the tailwind you might get. And the traffic you wind up in on I-35. It could be longer if you wind up in construction on I-35, but I don't want to get on that rant right now. Bottom line is Weatherford and Pioneer Cellular Event Center, a fantastic place to watch a game. But who would have thought that especially with the number two and number six teams in the state in girls basketball, that the area final and a championship and possibly a rematch of the game that we just watched here would be in Weatherford. And you just look at the Class 2A bracket and see that, uh, well, Dale and Vanoss getting the better end of that draw, staying more in the southeast quadrant of the state with area 
the area in which they're in. Area four headed again out to Weatherford for the final. Mentioned Silo, by the way, as there's Justice for long range. He didn't call bank. It doesn't matter. The bank's open tonight for Luke Justice. His second three-pointer of the night gives him ten points, and Silo's back to within one. I know he didn't call bank because he looked at that a little incredulously. How about Neptune trying a three? Not there. Lackey underneath. Shots blocked. Gets the board. He'll go to the free throw line now, though. Just stays tenacious. And Chandler Lackey will go to the free throw line for two attempts. Silo hosting district in a couple of weekends and will host Calera. So a two-team district. Both teams will definitely advance to regional. And, wow, I thought that Lackey was going to go to the free throw line to shoot two. Instead, that foul was on the court. So the Bruins looking for Adair. Pump fake. There's two defenders, and it looked like that Adair's jersey was grabbed. Wow. Connor Cordell, I thought he had a hold of Adair's jersey, and so did Coach Johnson and many of the Cano faithful. Cordell now with the ball, top of the key. One dribble, he'll pick it up. For Caddo, as Justice jumper no good, he's going to follow it, get it back all alone, under the basket, count it, and the Silo Rebels have retaken the lead. Luke Justice with 12 tonight. Connor Cordell initiating some more contact with Adair. And this time a little bit of a clothesline. And the freshman trying to really get inside the jersey of K.W. Adair. Blackie checks out. Couch checks back in. And we watch this matchup now. Adair gets around him, stops. Can't make the shot. Neptune will kick it out. And Neptune driving baseline. And Cordell could not move over quickly enough. And Neptune was fouled. Foul on number four, Connor Cordell, his second personal foul. It's going to be two free throws now, it looks like, for Colton Neptune. Yeah, I thought he was in the act of shooting. So Caddo hosting, we go back to our district conversation there. Caddo hosting, Rock Creek will be playing at Caddo 2 and Wilson as well. That's District 5 in Area 4. Silo hosting Calera in District 2 of Area 4. And there's one more 2A team in Bryan County, and that is Colbert. In Area 3, Colbert, along with Tushka, will be traveling to Allen for district assignment. Neptune makes the first, misses the second. And it's tied up again. Man-to-man -man look now. Extending a little farther for Caddo. Justice driving in, stops, and puts that one up and over. And Luke Justice is the offense tonight for Silo. 14 of the 22 points coming by way of number 24. Nice look. Nesbitt finds Neptune under the glass. And Colton Neptune now with five. For three, Proctor, no good. Neptune is there, grabs the board. And stepping over quickly is Justice, but he was on the line for the steal. He saw that Couch was losing control of it and hustled up to make that play. Adair 
The cutter, nice behind the head look. Ader can't make the basket. And we go to the end of the first half, and this one is tied at 22. Fantastic job by Catter to get back into it, and Silo holds its own against the number 14 team in Class 2A. We'll take a break. We'll be back in a moment. It's halftime here of this Bryan County Patriot Spotlight game. This is Midwest Sports Saturday. Good morning. I'm Joey McWilliams. <laughs> I'm impressed with what you got going on, Joey. Because it's hot. Oh my goodness, it's hot. This is, for my money, the biggest matchup of the day. I'm going to have lots of fun today.
Welcome back as we are here at Silo, the second part of our doubleheader tonight. Glad to be with you. I'm Joey McWilliams along with my sometimes and somewhat silent partner, Jayla Quinn. As tonight's third quarter is brought to you by Gallipot Pharmacy. I want to say thanks to all of our sponsors, Heartbeat Realty, Modern Abstract and Title, Computer Techs, Bulldog Nutrition as Justice doesn't get the roll. And by the way, Luke Justice with nine points. That was all of the scoring for Silo in the third quarter. Justice has 14 tonight. Sales and Trails Family History and Computer Techs. But Gallipot Pharmacy, our third quarter sponsor, Jenkins, pump fake, finds a way to get open, shoots that one way too strong in silo with an opportunity. Each team now coming up short with the first possession. This one's tied at 22 all. Haven Nesbitt has nine points for Caddo, all of them coming in the first quarter. Colton Neptune with five. And for the silo Rebels, Forgy going strong to the basket. He'll get another opportunity. And a senior on the line to shoot, too. Jenkins picked up the foul, his first personal. Luke Justice, by the way, with a game-high 14 points and two points, or excuse me, four points piece for both Kyler Proctor and Brett Forgey, and it's going to stay at four points for Forgey as he misses the first free throw opportunity. Had an exciting one a little bit earlier here as Cato came away with a 49-48 victory. On the road, a one-point win over the number two team in Class 2A. Forgy makes the second, and this one is finally untied again. Bruins working outside the arc. Nesbitt drives in. That one's misdirected by Forgy underneath, but Colton Neptune has the putback. Neptune now with seven. That one stripped away, and Proctor able to hang on to it. It's going to stay with Silo. Justice will reset up top. Adair lets Proctor get around him, and Neptune with the defensive board. Good job by the freshman. Kyler Proctor driving strong to the basket. Can't get the shot to fall. Adair, the cutter, hard to the glass, count it, K.W. Adair. That's his first basket tonight. And it comes here with six minutes remaining in the third quarter. Forgy, contact between he and Neptune, and no call. Bruins get it back. Jenkins behind his back, gets around two defenders. He goes strong to the basket. And Silo with an opportunity, high pass. Here's the trap. There's a Rebel open somewhere, not there at the half court line. Jenkins with the steal, off to Adair, and here comes the defense. Adair draws three defenders. Goes to the basket again, gets around Justice, won't get the shot twice now that the Bruins have had opportunities. And completely on the other end, it is Luke Justice going coast to coast. He has 16. Rebels are back to within one. And Luke Justice, the senior transfer, is really having a night. Bruins strong to the basket is Couch. And he has two. Back up to a three-point game. Full court pressure again. Diamond look. Adair with the steal. Knocks this one away. Jenkins gets around. No, he does not get around. Justice. Justice with the block. And this is going to stay with Silo. Adair with the foul. How about Luke Justice? Strong on both the defensive end and offensive end. Gary Hayslip will check back in for Silo. Carter Parker checking back in as well. There's the trap and another steal. 
Adair, three on one, the bounce pass over to Nesbitt, can't get the layup. Rebound by Hayslip down low, knocked out, and it's going to stay with Caddo. Justice gets a hand on that one. Title will take a timeout, gives me an opportunity to say thanks to Gallipot Pharmacy. Josiah Schomer and his staff taking care of your pharmacy needs. An independent pharmacist in Calera at 301 East Main Street. I think he still has some lock boxes. If you're a new customer getting your prescriptions met at Gallipot Pharmacy, tell, tell Josiah that Joey sent you and that you're looking for your lock box if he has any left. Get a lock box to take care of your prescriptions if you are, again, a new customer for Gallipot Pharmacy. By the way, this Bryan County Patriots Spotlight game is on the MidwestSports.net YouTube channel. You, you can find it by searching Midwest Sports Net. And there we are, an MW with a blue field and circle behind it. Please do subscribe. Had some new subscribers today already. Want to say thank you for our new subscribers. The goal is 1,000 here in 2020. I'd like to hit that four digits worth of subscribers, and you can help. So please do subscribe. Neptune gets around Forgy and Neptune off the glass. Colton Neptune now with two more points, and he has nine tonight. And the pressure on defense is starting to pay off for the Bruins. Again, Cato number 14 in Class 2A coming in 17 and 2. But Justice allows a defender to go past. And they'll reset. Long range jumper for Luke Justice. Count it. That was from about 24 feet. And Luke Justice now has 19 points, the senior. Closing out this year on a high note here. Will it be with a win as well? He has the ball. Try it from the S in silo. This one a little bit short. And it's still a one-possession game, though. And it's almost like, well, why not? Try it. See if something can happen. And since the Rebels will get this one back, they'll reset into a half-court look, maybe a little bit more to Coach Wiles' liking. Proctor for three, right wing, rattles home, silos back on top. Timeout on the court, and Coach Johnson will take this one, and we keep it right here, saying thanks to our sponsors again, to Computer Techs, to... Bulldog Nutrition to Sales and Trails Family or Family History, not Family Pharmacy. No, that's Gallipot Pharmacy to Modern Abstract and Title and to Heartbeat Realty. And we'll take a look really quickly here at the remainder of the season. The Caddo Bruins coming in on a two-game winning streak after having fallen to Number eight team in Class A, Kiowa, right after the Bryan County Tournament Championship, the victory over Boswell, wins over Wright City and Tushka, and then at home for the final two games of the regular season against Rattan on Tuesday and Calera on Thursday. Meanwhile, for Silo, the remainder of the season looks like this. Three more games going to Boswell on Monday, then home against Tishomingo on Tuesday and against Class 3A Dixon a week from tonight. Adair shot won't fall, put back won't go, but he'll go to the line. First team foul against Silo here in the second half as Adair will get to shoot two free throws. Silo coming in after a win over Ashley in the Bryan County Tournament. Excuse me, well, I went over Ashley and Tushka, forgive me. Consolation championship there. But losses, back-to-back -back losses at Atoka and at Colbert. So Silo trying to break that streak. And Adair makes both free throws 
It's back to a one-point lead for Cato. Here's the full court pressure again. The diamond look, the trap. Near steal this time won't happen, and Proctor will take it down. Man-to-man -man look, collapsing in the lane. Jumper by Jestis up and over Neptune. Count that one. Luke Jestis, he had five points in the first quarter, nine in the second quarter, seven right now here in the third, and he's crossed the 20-point plateau. Running jumper no good for Jordan Hell. Excuse me, that was Jaden Self. I apologize. That's the hesitation. Stepping in with the steal. That's Couch. Three on two. Spins. Jumper off the glass. Adair can't bring it in. And Jenkins does, but it's tied up. Great job. And good sportsmanship from number 24 in both jerseys. Jenkins and Justice. This one has just been close throughout. If you expect anything different tonight, you're just not going to get it. The only, the only thing that looked a little odd was Caddo spotting Silo those nine points to get the game started. And since that time, it's been really tight. Justice running jumper in the lane. Again, same result. There's an opening, and he's found that spot at about nine feet away from the basket. And Luke Justice has two more points. He has nine in the quarter. Adair to counter. Adair to tie. And this one is knotted up at 35s. KW Adair has seven points in the game. All seven points coming here in the third quarter. Justice, you can't leave him alone right there. Instead, he kicks it outside. And the three-point attempted by Duncan is a little short. Nesbitt ahead. And Justice gave just enough defense there to force Nesbitt into a shot he didn't want. And Silo now is going to inbound. Here comes the pressure again on defense. Now Coach Johnson getting fresh legs in off the bench. Full court zone pressure. Justice triple teamed near steal and the steal. Hayslip ahead to Adair. He's going to go strong to the basket, and he'll be fouled. He'll go to the line to shoot two now. What the silo crowd isn't going to like is that Adair seemed to lower that shoulder a bit to draw the contact. Duncan picks up his second personal foul. Both free throws good. KW Adair, four for four from the free throw line here in the third quarter. And how Proctor got away from that, I have no idea. And he misses the three attempt a little too strong. Time runs out here in the third quarter, and this one will be close with eight minutes left to play. Those two free throws by KW Adair, the difference here in the contest. It's a two-point game back with the fourth quarter on the Bryan County Patriots Spotlight Game. This is Midwest Sports Saturday. Good morning, I'm Joey McWilliams. I'm impressed with what you got going on, Joey. Because it's hot. Oh my goodness, it's hot. This is, for my money, the biggest matchup of the day. I'm going to have lots of fun today. Back here in silo with eight minutes left here on the clock. 
Well, we thought we might see overtime in the previous contest. Instead, a foul at the buzzer gives Caddo an opportunity. Kenzie Dixon, the senior, drains a free throw, a 49-48 final as Caddo defeated Silo and gave the Lady Rebels just their second loss of the season and avenged a Bryan County Tournament Championship game. Meanwhile, we could see regulation not be enough in this second game. It's 37-35. Pretty well played game between these two teams. Adair back on the court along with Jenkins, Couch, Nesbitt, and Neptune for the Bruins. And Couch gets around Cordell. Three-point attempt a little bit too strong. For Silo, I mentioned Cordell along with Forge, Proctor, Justice, and Duncan. And as soon as I give you the Bruins lineup, Hayslip comes back in. Coach Johnson. He's got about three deep on his bench. He's definitely been active in bringing players in and out, and that's a backcourt violation. And Forgy just a little bit of a mental slip up there. Needed the help, and it was a simple mistake. Nesbitt driving in, draws the contact. He'll go to the line to shoot two. Haven Nesbitt had nine points in the first quarter. And those nine points all to his credit right now. I'd like to get another point in here and break into double figures tonight and give his team a little bit more of a lead. And there's the free throw. Count it. Nesbitt has 10. Crowd was pretty strong through the first half of the boys' game. And on a Friday night as Nesbitt drains the second free throw. Still pretty good numbers here to watch a game that is very tight. Proctor draws Adair out on defense, but can't make the run. And Neptune, a long pass, knocked away, nearly stolen back, and eventually Justice will come away with it for Silo. Rebels trailing by four. It's a two-possession game. Plenty of time for the Rebels. Justice stops. Ten-foot jumper. My goodness. Luke Justice. Same spot, same result. The senior has 25. He's exceeded the number on his jersey. Nesbitt finds an opening, scooted around a defender, and gets to the basket. Haven Nesbitt with 13, back to a two-possession game. That one tipped, knocked away. Nesbitt, the beneficiary, giving the steal. Can't get the layup. The Bruins have left a lot of points within two feet of the basket tonight. Hay split, hay slip, excuse me, the near steal. And Justice will want this one back. It's a man to man look, giving a lot of room outside the arc for Caddo. And now slipping back into more of a zone feel. Proctor kicks outside. Justice for three, right wing, nope. Bruins with numbers. Jenkins tries his from long range, and it rims out. And the offense is slowed down for both these teams. Patient as Justice drives in. The defense steps up. Long range three for Proctor. And the Rebels will get this back. Neptune couldn't bring it in. Yeah. 
And that's going to stop the action for just a moment. Hayslip reaches in. I want to say thanks to Bulldog Nutrition for being our fourth quarter sponsor here tonight. As Silo takes the timeout, we're going to go ahead and take one, too, back in a moment here on the Bryan County Patriots Spotlight Game. This is Midwest Sports Saturday. Good morning. I'm Joey McWilliams. I'm impressed with what you got going on, Joey. Because it's hot. Oh, my goodness, it's hot. This is, for my money, the biggest matchup of the day. I'm going to have lots of fun today. It's a four-point game, two possessions here from the Bryan County Patriots Spotlight Game. Don't forget the MidwestSports.net YouTube channel's flagship show, Midwest Sports Saturday. We'll come to you tomorrow from studio and then back on the road again as we will be originating the broadcast from Conway, Arkansas, on the campus of Central Baptist College, an American, America Midwest game, a doubleheader between Central Baptist and Lyon. As we are back here, in Silo, Justice open. And we're not going to count that as Justice had a great look at the basket and Forgy with a moving screen. And that was a design play coming out of the timeout to get Justice open. To say he's had the hot hand is an understatement. The senior has 25 and drained that one, but it's not going to count. Nesbitt gets around the defender, and that time Haven Nesbitt with two. He's had six here in the fourth quarter, and it is a six-point advantage now for the Bruins. And the Rebels really struggling on the offensive side other than Justice. Proctor for three. Forgy with the rebound and put back and just used those long arms to get over, up and over Hayslip. And Brett Forgy now has seven points. It's back to a four-point game. Caddo can't afford to let off the gas, and Couch goes strong to the basket. Can't get that to fall. Justice with a board. And the number 14, Bruins. Feeling the pressure now here with less than three minutes remaining in silo. The handoff by Forgy to Justice, and Hayslip staying with him pretty tightly. Forgy can't control it. Near steal, it will come away for the Bruins. And Coach Johnson calls the timeout before the uh, foul by Cordell. And they didn't call the foul. Looked like he was going in strong. So Coach Johnson calls the timeout with his team getting possession, just barely getting possession of that ball. Two-possession game now. And if we reset anything here, it is... That Silo got off to a 9-0 lead. Caddo comes back. A 15-13 lead at the end of the first quarter. It was a 15-13 third quarter for Caddo as well. It's been tight throughout. It's been Luke Justice for Silo. And it's been a pretty balanced attack on the offensive side from the Bruins. Haven Nesbitt has 15 points. Adair with 9 as well as Colton Neptune. Braden Couch with 6 off the bench. Caddo at this point could afford to run a little time off the clock. Really the key here is the patience for the Bruins on offense. And now Adair calling folks away. Splits two defenders with a dangerous pass, but Hayslip gets it. He'll take it right to the basket. Off the glass and in. An opening there. And Gary Hayslip with a great move. He has four tonight. And Cano's back up by six. Here comes the pressure again. 
Justice. Opening collapsed. Will he get it back? And looked like a travel there. Missed shot by Cordell. He gets it back. Put back is no good. Forgy is there, and he's fouled. For Lackey, just the first personal foul, 15 foul now for Caddo, just below the two-minute mark. Silo with four team fouls, and you'd think they'd want to pick up a couple quickly if they could, if they need to. They may need them a little bit later on. Forgy makes the first free throw attempt. Neptune will check back in. They may need those fouls a little bit later on to force... A team to a free throw line, and Forgy makes the second as well. Brett Forgy now with nine points tonight. Silo takes the timeout, a full timeout, and we will keep it right here for a moment. Again, thank you to Bulldog Nutrition in Calera and the sister site for Bulldog Nutrition, Colbert Nutrition, appropriately enough, in Colbert. We mentioned... Midwest Sports Saturday coming up this Saturday from studio. Next Saturday from Conway, Arkansas. And trips along the way in the spring to Bartlesville, Oklahoma, Bentonville, Arkansas, as well as Fort Worth, Texas. Other stops along the way for Midwest Sports Saturday. By the way, the Summit will have a panel on Monday night again talking some Great Lakes Valley Conference basketball. GLVC Basketball on the Summit. Be sure and tune in for that. And please do subscribe to this channel, Midwest Sports Net. It's the home of the Bryan County Patriot Spotlight game. All other Bryan County Patriot video you can see on the Bryan County Patriot channel, except for sports. And you get that right here on MidwestSports.net. Less than two minutes remaining now. Little full court pressure. We haven't seen this as much tonight. It's man-to-man -to -man pressure from Silo. And they're trying to commit the foul. Hayslip for three. Count it. Hayslip. That could be the dagger. Hayslip was open, and Silo couldn't get the foul called. And Hayslip now with seven points tonight, and that is the difference in this game. Justice for three. That one rattles out. Kicked back in. Blocked by Hayslip. What a huge defensive play. Haven Nesbitt drives in, count the basket. It's 50 to 41, and the Bruins are taking control in the latter part of this game. Haven Nesbitt has eight points here in the fourth quarter, 17 overall. He had nine in the first quarter. Proctor's three will stay in play. Adair comes away with it, and Adair stops, kicks outside. Nesbitt's open. And the Bruins, he finds high sl Hayslip underneath, can't make either of two shots, and then a foul comes. And if there was anything in that possession that Coach Johnson didn't want, that would be it. Won't send the Rebels to the line. It was the sixth team foul. Next one will. Clock stops and gives the Rebels opportunity, and Hayslip steps in, hustles all the way down the court, and knocks it out of bounds. And that is a heads-up hustle play on defense from Haven Nesbitt. A lot of props to the Bruin. Proctor double teamed and a foul will come. And three-pointer obviously well after the whistle. That will send Proctor to the line for a one and one opportunity and Jenkins his second personal foul, and, and the second time now that Coach Johnson's got to look around and say, why the foul there? First free throw, no good. Rebound. Bruins. Quick foul on the court. Foul number 11. 
Rebels, again, need at least one more just to send it to the bonus for the next foul. Adair for three, gets rid of it quickly, count the basket. KW Adair breaks into double figures tonight with less than 30 seconds remaining. He has 12, and that should be enough. Proctor tries the long range three. That one will come up short. He'll get it back. And Justice, why not? That comes up a little bit short. Luke Justice with 25 points on the night as Nesbitt will hold on to this and time will tick away. Zeros on the scoreboard and the Cato Bruins have completed the sweep tonight on the road over Silo. It is a 53-41 victory for the boys tonight following a 49-48 win for the girls a little bit earlier. I want to say thanks to all of our sponsors again, to Bulldog Nutrition as well as Computer Techs, Sales and Trails, Family History, Gallipot Pharmacy, Modern Abstract and Title, and Heartbeat Realty. I want to say thanks to my somewhat and sometimes silent partner, Jayla Quinn, on camera tonight. I am Joey McWilliams. Thanks again for watching this Bryan County Patriots spotlight game, the doubleheader again going to Caddo. Please do like this video, and please do subscribe to the channel Midwest Sports Net. Again, the final from Silo, Caddo 51, Silo 53, excuse me. Let's try that again. Again, the final from Silo, Caddo 53, Silo 51. God bless you. Have a great night.